Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. So today I have brought uh, a challenge from the test series. It was asked in one of our tests and uh, most of the students they were not able to figure this out in the exam situation. So let me read out this problem for you and see if you can uh, solve this problem. Uh, take a good time whatever uh, you think is required for this maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes or even more if you want although it was supposed to be an objective question in the exam and uh, of course uh, this a question can be attempted using some advanced techniques like method of images and uh, even if you use those techniques it's it will be quite a lengthy uh, solution but uh, see if you can come up with something smart and uh, within itj syllabus for doing this problem so let me get into the problem right away so what do we have a metal sphere of radius one meter has a spherical cavity of radius half meter so here is a metal metallic sphere and there's a cavity so this radius is one meter and the cavity radius is 0 0.5 meter okay okay a charge of plus 5 micro coulomb is kept in the cavity the line joining the centers okay on the line joining the centers at a distance 40 centimeter from the center of the original sphere so this is the center of the original sphere and this is the point charge plus 5 micro and this distance is given as 40 centimeter or 0 0.4 meter okay this distance is 40 centimeter okay if the net charge in the metallic sphere is 4 micro coulomb okay i have made uh, a little bit uh, simplification for you so uh, as you know from the standard theory about cavity and shielding uh, if there is a 5 micro coulomb here there will be minus 5 micro coulomb on the cavity's inner surface and then 5 micro coulomb will go to the outer surface but uh, uh, it uh, the sphere is not neutral as such it already has a 4 micro coulomb charge so so 4 micro coulomb and then 5 micro coulomb goes from here it becomes 9 micro coulomb so i've already drawn a little simplified picture for you okay and now there are certain things that we have to comment on so the first thing is uh, first is potential at point a is 103.5 uh, kilovolt at this point uh, we have to check whether the potential is 103.5 kilovolt, 103 kilovolt or not then uh, we have to find the potential at uh, point b of the cavity which is fairly simple relatively uh, and if you see the thumbnail i was focusing on this part of the question this is very tricky okay then uh, also c part is a little tricky uh, electric field at b is uh, 1125 kilo newton per coulomb and the d option is electric field outside the sphere does not change if the position of plus q inside the cavity changes now uh, option d is uh, fairly straightforward it's based on the shielding theory and uh, you should be able to comment on this without much uh, difficulty however uh, uh, the option a and c you need to see a little carefully and uh, if you want to uh, watch a video on the proof of shielding or the logic behind shielding i'll be sharing a, a video link in the description box you can have a look uh, if you want to brush up your concepts of shielding uh, here uh, i'll be using uh, the concepts directly uh, okay so take some time if you want you can pause the video and attempt the problem now uh, i'll straight straight away get into the solution okay so uh, okay let's get into the analysis first i'll be finding the potential at point b uh, because that part is simple and then we'll see what can we do about part a and option a and other options first i'll be finding the uh, potential at the center of cavity because that seems to be the easiest to figure out okay so now you know that uh, this uh, 9 micro coulomb will, will be uniformly distributed because of shielding this 9 micro coulomb will be uniformly distributed and we can just treat it like a uniformly charged sphere and straight away put kq by r where q being 9 micro coulomb and r being uh, this radius because at inside point the potential is same as at the surface uh, due to a thin spherical shell right so 9 micro coulomb potential at b can be directly found as k into 9 micro coulomb divided by 1 meter okay then i can also find out the potential due to this point charge at b so it's simply kq by r where r is this distance is 0 0.20 centimeter so the centers are at distance 20 centimeter so this distance is 20 centimeter and then this whole thing was 40 centimeter that means what this distance is also 20 centimeter okay so because of 5 micro coulomb it is k into 5 micro coulomb divided by this 0.2 meter okay 
and from cavity the entire uh, uh, cavity the point d is equidistant and it's at a distance of 0.5 meter so due to this minus 5 micro coulomb also we can directly find out so this is what i have done i found the potential at point b due to various charges so here's the i've drawn the figure again so due to 9 micro coulomb it is 9 into 10 to the power 9 is the k and then 9 micro coulomb is 9 into 10 to the power minus 6 and this distance is uh, 1 okay so k q by r so contribution due to this 9 micro coulomb is 81 kilo volt over here okay 81 kilo volt then due to plus 5 micro coulomb this one this distance is 0 0.2 so this is k into 5 micro coulomb divided by 0 0.2 this distance is 0 0.2 so that comes out to be plus 225 kilo volt okay and then due to minus 5 micro coulomb this one that this is distributed charge so that will that is k into minus 5 micro coulomb divided by this distance is uh, 0 0.5 okay uh, this radius cavity radius is 0 0.5 so and all these charges are at a distance of 0.5 so simply i find 9 into 10 to the 9 into minus 5 into 10 to the minus 6 divided by the radius that is 0.5 and this comes out to be minus 90 kilovolt and now what do we do we add all these three things all the three contributions you add up and that's what you get uh, you get 216 kilo volt okay so fair enough uh, so uh, let's look at uh, the potential of b in the options so what does it say potential uh, okay just a sec hmm. Hmm. so potential at the center b of the cavity is 216 volt so this is correct that's what we got see 216 kilo volt so option b is correct so we should be happy we figure out at least one option okay now we need to figure out the potential at center a so now i am going to develop a logic and please be very attentive it's a little complicated logic uh, i mean this is not something conventional that you normally do but uh, there's a nice trick you can use here okay so let us visualize the field lines in the two situations had there been no charge on cavity and considering the cavity charge so what happens like here we have plus 5 micro coulomb and if there were no induced charges in the cavity then these field lines would be just radially outwards right just simply like that okay as i've shown here whereas since the cavity has got a negative charge everywhere so field lines are going to terminate perpendicularly on the cavity that means what here the field lines are going to diverge okay here uh, whatever is the spacing between the field lines the, the, because of this negative charge in the cavity these field lines are going to diverge that means what the actual field in the cavity in this uh, between regions p and a is going to be smaller than the field had there been no negative charge distribution over there okay so that's what i've written let us visualize the field lines in two situations had there been no charge in cavity and considering the cavity charge qualitatively so if we do not consider the cavity charge then what will be vb minus va so if we do not consider the cavity charge the potential difference is simply because of plus 5 micro coulomb and how much is that that is k 9 into 10 to the 9 into 5 into 10 to the minus 6 divided by r so this is the potential at point b because of this point charge right so vb this is vb and va will be instead again uh, charge is 5 into 10 to the minus 6 micro coulomb k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and this distance uh, from a and p this distance is 0 0.4 okay and you just calculate vb minus va had there been no effect of these negative charges on the field lines so that comes out to be 112.5 kilovolt okay so this would have been the potential difference between b and a had there been uh, no negative charges on the cavity however the actual value of vb minus va should be less than this why because as we move along the field lines the field uh, the potential decreases right but if the field is weaker then the decrease in potential is smaller right so from b to a the potential decrease the actual potential decrease would be smaller than what the potential decrease would have been had we had there been no divergence of the field lines okay so i hope this is the most crucial step in the entire analysis because the field lines are diverging over here so potential drop between b and a the actual potential drop between b and a is smaller than the potential drop had there been no diverging uh, divergence of the field lines okay so uh, because, okay so if uh, we do not consider a divergence what is the potential of, at point a that is vb minus vb minus va and vb minus va uh, ignoring the divergence of field line we got 112.5 kilovolt and vb we had calculated it was 216 
uh, uh, kilovolt. So here we had calculated 216 kilovolt. See, VB we had calculated 216 kilovolt. So we just subtract. So 216 kilovolt minus VB minus VA that is 112.5 kilovolt had there been no divergence of field length, and this comes out to be 103.5 kilovolt, right? So what does our option A say? Op our option says that potential at center A is 103.5 kilovolt. But this would have been the case had there been no divergence of field lines. But actually the field lines are diverging. So that means what? This the term that we are subtracting has has to be smaller than 112.5, right? Because this was not considering the divergence of field lines. Due to the divergence, the drop is smaller than this, okay? And accordingly, this uh, value is the so the subtraction value is smaller than the 112.5. And accordingly, the potential of A we know that it should be greater than 103.5, right? should be greater than 103.5 kilovolt okay so that's what i've written however the actual value of vba minus va is smaller than 112.5 kv so actual potential of a must be greater than 103.5 kilovolt so option a is wrong i hope you understood this was the most important uh, discussion point in the video and i hope i've amply illustrated this now uh, the other parts are uh, relatively simpler we want we want to find out field at b so now field at b Again, uh, we can consider uh, had there been no divergence of field line and uh, what would happen if there were diverging field lines. So if there were no divergence of field lines, then we can just ignore the contribution of cavity to the field and just we can find out KQ by R square. So that would have been 9 into 10 to the power 9 into 5 into 10 to the power minus 5 micro coulomb divided by distance that is between 5 micro coulomb and this point B, this distance is 0 0.2 as stated in the question. Okay. So if you calculate this, this comes out to be 1125 kilo Newton per coulomb. And this is what is written here. See, this says 1125 kilo Newton per coulomb. But then again, the problem is this, this uh, uh, is the wood, this field would have been the, this would have been the case if we did not consider the divergence of field line, right? But in uh, practice, actually the field lines are diverging. So field is going to be smaller than this. So let's see what I've written. So this is the field if divergence of field lines is not considered. So now since the field lines are diverging, actual field will be less than this. So actual field is less than 1125 kilo Newton per coulomb. Therefore, option C is incorrect. Okay. And option D is of course correct. Option C was this one. So this is uh, incorrect. Okay. And option D is electric field outside the sphere does not change if the position of charge Q inside the cavity changes. Obviously, this is the basic uh, consequence of the shielding. So when you are uh, shifting this charge here and there, the only the distribution in the cavity will change. And this charge and the cavity charge, they together produce zero field everywhere outside this region. Okay, And that's why this is not going to affect any charge distribution on the surface and accordingly no effect on the field outside the sphere. So option D is obviously correct. Okay, And if you want, you can watch the video on shielding that I've given in the description box. Okay and i hope you enjoyed this question this was a very tough question for the students as students reported it and some students had asked this question as doubt and it was it was not an easy one to figure out but uh, i hope you enjoyed my analysis and uh, if you did enjoy my analysis please uh, do give a thumbs up to this video and uh, please uh, uh, share this video as much as possible in your whatsapp study groups or telegram study groups or discord servers or wherever uh, you think that uh, students might benefit from this video and uh, if you have not already subscribed to my channel please 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 do press the subscribe button please subscribe to my channel that's uh, one of the biggest motivations i have for uh, writing and uh, producing new videos uh, thanks a lot for watching this video please do keep coming back to my channel for more awesome stuff god bless you all thank you